Okay, class, this is one final lesson for the whole course, 12.6, the standard model of elementary particles. This lesson, we're just going over a couple of ideas that really come about from quantum theory. There's no math in this one, and you'll see at the bottom, no homework. But I'm just going to go over a couple of the ideas that are introduced and that we're still sort of dealing with uh, in, our, in modern physics right now, trying to come to the bottom of. The first idea here is talking about the model for atoms. And the planetary model, introduced by Rutherford, um, had a, has a problem. It had a problem, which was that when an orbiting electron emits energy, and it emits that energy, of course, as light. The electron, it should spiral into the nucleus. If it's orbiting and it loses that energy, then it should decay, its orbit should decay, and it should end up spiraling directly into the nucleus, like this picture over here, this, this spiral into the nucleus. And obviously that's not what happens. Right, we have electrons, they fire off photons, and the, the atom doesn't collapse. It still manages to survive. So something is happening there that's different. And the solution here was from a guy named Bohr, which is why this is called the Bohr-Rutherford model. So Bohr model. He says that electrons can only have certain values of energy. And these are what we call energy levels. And notice really what this, this is, is quanta. This is again from our quantum theory. So he took the quantum theory which said that energy levels only exist at certain states he said that should be true for our electrons that are orbiting, and that's why they stay where they are. They can't release some small amount of energy. It has to be in these fixed amounts. So that sort of solved that problem. Um, okay, and that's, that's the end of that idea. Another idea that, um, that we want to talk about here is antimatter. Antimatter is a particle with the same mass and opposite charge as a normal particle. And antimatter is always paired. So, for instance, we can have electrons plus positrons that's the matter and antimatter pair. And we have neutrons and antineutrons. That sort of thing. And these do exist. Antimatter particles do exist. We've actually looked at positrons in grade 11, if you were in grade 11 physics. Um, you should have seen positrons in terms of beta decay. So these are explained by the standard model of physics, which is the current model that we use to understand particle physics. And it says that all matter is made up of quarks and leptons. You've probably heard of quarks before. You might not have heard of leptons, though you definitely are familiar with some leptons. So let's talk about quarks here. Quarks are these fundamental particles, so they are smaller than protons and neutrons. In fact, there are three quarks in a proton. So quarks, there are six different kinds, and we call them flavors. I don't know why. It's just a silly way of... So there's six flavors of quark, and they are up which we use the, the symbol U for, down, quark, so 
D, Charm Quark, which is C, Strange Quark, Top Quark, and Bottom. And those names don't really mean much. They don't have anything to do with their physical properties. Physicists just made them up and they thought they sounded funny. So they stuck with them. Up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. Okay, so these quarks, they're all different. They all have different mass. They have different um, properties. Their charge is kind of interesting. All quarks have charge of either positive two-thirds of E, which is the charge of an electron or a, or a proton, or negative one-third of E. Those are the only two that exist, positive two-thirds or negative one-third. Those are our quarks. And each quark also has an anti-quark. And the antiquark has the same mass and just the opposite charge. So then they can have negative two thirds or positive one third. So each quark has an antiquark. For instance, the antiquark for up is written like this. That's anti up and anti down. Okay, so those are our quarks. Quarks make up pretty much everything, not quite everything. They make up things called hadrons. So hadrons are particles made up of two or more quarks. Okay. And if all these names are starting to get to you, you don't need to memorize these. Really, this lesson is just to fill you in on where we're at right now in physics, what the quantum theory is. So don't worry too much about memorizing these things. I just want you to get an understanding. So in the world, we have hadrons, which are made up of quarks. And we also have leptons. So you see we have these two things, hadrons and leptons. So hadrons are all made up of quarks. And they consist of baryons that are made up of three quarks each. So each baryon is made up of three quarks. And that includes protons. So a proton is a, um, is a baryon made up of an up, up, down quark. So one up, two up, and one down. So two ups and one down. And neutrons are also baryons. And that's made of up, down, down, like this. OK, and we also have mesons, which are made up of just two quarks, which is one quark and one anti-quark. So those are baryons and mesons. And then we have leptons, which are different from hadrons. And they're also different from quarks. So leptons are other elementary particles. So they're not quarks. And they tend to exist just on their own. And a good example of that is the electron. So the electron is a lepton. We've got baryons, our proton and neutron. Leptons are electrons. OK, and then there's two more ideas here. So fermions, that's all leptons and hadrons. So all leptons and hadrons are called fermions. So fermions are everything made up of quarks and leptons. And they are all the particles of matter. So if you take all, 
all the hadrons, all the leptons, anything made out of quarks, and anything that's a lepton, put them all together, that are, those are the particles of matter. Then there's a completely different category of particle called bosons. Bosons do not make up matter. Bosons are called field particles. And what they do is they transmit forces between our fermions. So for instance, the electric field. The boson for the electric field is a photon. That is what transmits the electric field between different fermions, is the photon. So okay, this is adding more and more and more things here. And you might be saying, well, I don't really believe any of this. All of these have been confirmed experimentally with things like the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, where they fire things as fast as they possibly ca can, collide them together, and try to find all these new strange particles that don't normally show up. They have found bosons, they have found fermions, of course, and leptons, and quarks. Th this is confirmed, this is how things are made up. We don't know if maybe there's something smaller, something else making up these things, but it is the case for sure that bosons for instance, exist. They are actual particles that are responsible for all the forces that are experienced between different particles. So that when we talk about the strong nuclear force holding the nucleus together, that is being done by a particle, a boson, called gluons. Okay, anyway, so that's, that's all the ideas here. I'll just leave you off with a statement about the theory of everything. This is the goal right now. This is what people are trying to accomplish. A theory of everything, which is a theory to combine the three fundamental forces and those are weak nuclear, strong nuclear, and electromagnet, electromagnetic. Those three have been combined. We have a theory that explains all three in a single theory, and it's consistent, that's all taken care of by quantum theory. But right now we want to combine that with a theory for gravity. Gravity right now is the odd one out. Into a single theory. And if you can do that, if by the end of the semester you can show me, hey, I just came up with a theory of everything, and it checks out, and all the math is good, then I think you will get level 4 plus for the rest of your life in physics. So, good luck with that. I did say the homework is none, but if you want to try coming up with a theory of everything, by all means, I am all ears. Have a good day.